Well, the pendolino has got a new livery, so stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, you can see we've got the white pendolino in front of you, and you probably haven't, well, you haven't seen it for a while, I can, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. And it wasn't because it was misbehaving, it's because I broke a coupling. Yeah, that's what I've made. So I've made these Nem Pocket style couplings, and then a normal Rapido coupling sits in the end there. Uh, but it just snapped off and um, I've just not got round to making a new one. So that's mainly the reason. But I thought it would be good over this Christmas holiday to get it relivered and get it back on the layout and get it running again. So that's what this video is about. Making the Avanti West Coast livery. Okay. Join me in a minute. Right, just to give you an indication of what I'm going to do with this, it's not going to be a respray, it's a body side water slide transfer. That makes sense. Now, they come in two different varieties and then a further two different varieties for each sort, if I'm making any sense. This one is for an inkjet printer. Okay, so it says it just there inkjet, and this other one inkjet. OK, but you also notice this one's clear and this one's white. OK, so that's the two different varieties of the inkjet sort. OK, so I have found that the inkjet variety does tend to be more durable. All right. So you can buy white, white and clear in laser printer version as well. But my only thing with that is that if you handle the transfer too much or it's not a simple um, place on, you want to manipulate it a bit, the toner does tend to crack slightly, um, whereas the inkjet will give a little bit. And if, particularly if you use it with um, something like Decalfix or one of those type products, um, it will it will be an awful lot more durable. So that's where I'm going with this. So it's a water slide transfer. So I'm now going to build the livery on the computer, all the different body sides, probably take a couple of sheets and then um, make the transfers. OK, so first step. All right, welcome back to the train. So the first step is to photograph all the different vehicles. Now, if a vehicle is the same as another, you only need to photograph the one, but the two end cars you can see have got one window more or less. So I think this is where the kitchen is, and I think this is first class. I might be wrong, but equally, there's certainly two different versions of the coach there. Do you know, it just goes to show. Um, this livery was quite paint poorly done and I, I did it quite quickly I must admit it was a very quick rushed job um, so it's desperately desperately needing the transfer livery putting on which hopefully should be a lot more accurate but anyway the point I'm making is once you've identified all the different vehicles you need to do both sides okay and then the idea would be to photograph it so it's absolutely level with the camera, not off at an angle like that, because obviously that would that wouldn't be appropriate, and it would be easier in the in the preparation stage if you got it perfectly parallel, so that this top edge here is parallel. Oh, nearly broke the cantograph, nearly parallel, or pretty much parallel with this edge of the photograph. Okay. Um, you can rotate it, but um, cropping it back to the right size might be a slightly more difficult job. Right, let's get to the computer. Right, there it is, there's the photo. Now, I haven't quite got it level. Um, you can see that, so I will do this again. But the idea now is to measure the train, the actual model and then make this exactly the same size. So when you do the transfers, they will fit on the train, okay? 
Right, and then on the next stage, which sadly I can't show you because of copyright images and all the rest of it, but is to find some images of the livery for each vehicle, okay? And then again, do the same again, bring them in and make them the same size. And then I wouldn't use that as the livery because sometimes they don't print very well. They're, they can be, the resolution can be a bit poor, but to recreate the livery, getting the right angles and, and spotting the right color by picking it off the original picture and then rebuild the livery and doing it that way, you stand a much better chance of getting the livery more accurate. Um, logos can often be found from Google. So again, it's just a case of downloading those. Um, just be careful that they've not just got a white background or a color background, uh, because sometimes they don't always fit perfectly on the model, on the, on the livery, so you have to do some adjustments. But anyway, that's where we're going. I will start building the livery and I'll show you when I've got some done. Right, welcome back to the computer. Um, the reference image I'm using is down there. Um, obviously I can't show you that because it's copyrighted, but it's good to just to sort of take the colors and the actual shapes. And I've literally just built the shapes over the top of the reference image and then transferred it up to my own. So I made a big rectangle, the right shape, which was 158 millimeters by 15, 15 high. And then literally just put the shapes over the top and then transfer every single one up. So all the doors, the windows, the logo, etc., etc., and just build it all from scratch. Not quite there yet. Still need to put the cant rail on the top. And there's a couple of blocks sort of about there and there. But it's coming. Oh, and two black lines coming down the side here. That sort of thing. Okay, I'll keep going and uh, I'll show you the images at the end. Welcome back. This is the first sheet um, of transfers I've just produced. So this is literally just printed straight from the printer. I'm going to leave it overnight. Um, you only normally need to leave it about half an hour or so, but it's a bit late now. It's quarter past 11 <laughs> so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stay up until quarter to 12 12 o'clock and get it sprayed i think it will do in the morning um once you've sprayed it with one single coat of uh your chosen lacquer then again leave it for at least half an hour maybe even an hour um and then once that's done then you're ready to put it into the water and put it onto the models. So it's gonna take a little while, obviously, and this is just one side. You can see this is just one side of the um, image, but there are different variations of it. Now, it might not be perfectly accurate, but it's as close as I'm gonna get it. <laughs> to put it. <laughs> so you can see there is this one single coach, which looks like that. Notice the windows at either end. And these ones are the same but you've got a variant for the pantograph. And then you obviously you've got the opposite orientation there where the windows are at this end and the symbols gone to that end. And then you've got another version for the pantograph at the top there. And again, that's just a duplicate of the one at the bottom, just in case I look up, <laughs> which you might do. Now, um, I'll show you a bit more about what I have to do once that's done, but uh, yeah, next stage, get it sprayed. All right. All right, well, there it is done. Um, and it's been lacquered as well, upside down to you. Um, the reason for that is because I'm going to cut off this one. Um, I'm not gonna show you literally every single thing um, because I think it's fairly obvious what I'm gonna do. I've got to cut out the windows. So I shall use the ruler to do that. Cut along with the scalpel until all the windows are cut and then end up with just the basic shape with no windows in at all. And then I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you how I put it on to the model. Welcome back. I've got my transfer, I've got my carriage, 
I've got um, a long straight um, pool bath, if you like, of warm water. This just happens to be a carriage box from the um, Engage Loco. And I've also got some Decal Fix. Other brands do do the same sort of thing. So my first job then is to put the transfer into the water and I'm going to put it face down because it will try and curl up um, from the front if you like going that way you can see it's starting to try and curl up. and then just leave that for about 40 seconds and in the meantime with the brush I'm just going to wet the side of the carriage making sure I've got the right side. <laughs> So, let's leave it in the water. If you try and bring it out too soon, the transfer just won't release. So what I want to try and do is dis not disturb the ink too much. The last one that I had, I've, I've had to do this one twice and it, uh, no, not quite. Uh, it it um, crinkled up the ink, which I've not experienced with inkjet before, to be honest. It's starting to go a little bit. Not quite. Right, now what I'm going to try and do this time is to move it off sideways. Gently move it sideways. Like that. Position the transfer and gently. Well, I decided to leave this clip in purely because it shows what sometimes can happen to the uh, water slide transfers, even though I've not really experienced it too often, to be honest with you. But when you, you'll see that the ink is cracking and it's basically because the transfer is stretching too much. Um, so as I pulled it across to fit it into the right place, literally you could see the gaps opening up. Um, so therefore it becomes totally unusable. So I then went on to a hunt thinking, is it the paper that was causing the problem? So I was trying to find a decent quantity of a brand that I've used before. Uh, but to be honest, I couldn't find any that would deliver in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I thought, worst comes to the worst, I'll give it another coat of lacquer as it is. There you can see it right now. And then I'll, I'll give it a try. And you'll see in the clip that comes after this that it has been successful. You see, look at the state of that. And this was the point I decided to scrap it. There we go. Well, I've never had that issue before where all the transfers crack up. Um, so initially I hadn't got a clue what was going on there. I tried three transfers and they all cracked and broke up. Couldn't use them. But I thought I'd give it a try, give it another spray over and that did work. And so I was able to salvage some of them. But the problem I was encountering after that was the fact that each coach or a couple of coaches have got a variant, a different variant. For example, all these have got the image on the right hand side, but most of these have got the windows up to the right, but there are some with the windows on the left. Hang on, I've got the final one there. See? There are also some window, there's one coach that has got nine windows down the side, and there are there is whereas most of the other coaches have got eight windows either shoved to the right or shoved to the left. Some coaches have got both sets of windows down one end of the carriage, so the gaps at both, ed both ends at the other end, if you like, if that makes sense. And there's some coaches with, an, with the windows which are on the left, both sides, so the gap is this side one end and on the opposite side at the other end. It's, it's an odd train. <laughs> I thought every carriage was the same until I started making this livery. And I tell you what, I've, you learn so much more about the structure of the train. But anyway, the transfers have gone on much better now. And I've finally got round to printing off the end um, uh, vehicles. 
Now, you might notice I've printed off four of each one, um, just in case. I don't know whether it's all going to work. Um, well, actually, there's two of each. So if you notice, these there's a short window version and a long window version. This one is the first class, contrary to what I said at the beginning of the video. And, and this one, I think, is the standard class. And I think, I think that's the kitchen. I might be wrong. I think it's the kitchen. But anyway, so there's two of each. So hopefully I should be able to salvage one, if not the other. And um, there's the coaches I'm missing as well. But most of the train is done, to be honest. And am I going to show it you now? Uh, no, <laughs> you have to wait until the very end for that. I'll get these on and hopefully we'll get it back on the track soon. I have got to reprint another coupling as well. So I'll hopefully get that done in a short time as well. All right, speak to you soon. All right, so I just thought I'd show you this um, before I show you the whole train, of course. The end cabs do peruse, pose a bit of a problem because obviously the uh, green um, goes around the outside. And I've got to go around the windows, oh, sorry, around the, the lights. Um, so that's going to put code, pose a bit of a problem. But one of the things I am using, I've got a, a transfer which failed um, purely because I knocked it. Um, and it ends up scrunching it all up, which is, it is one of these. And, um, you know, so I end up destroying it, but I can use it as a patch. So this bit down here, I can just use a bit of that and just sort of place it on. A bit like we, you would when you're doing a car, I suppose. Not that I've ever wrapped a car, but if you get a bit missing, I presume you can just put a bit on and, um, you know, so make it like that. So that's that's pretty much where I'm going with it. Um, hopefully those bits will just sort of blend into nothing. It does look a bit of a mess at the minute, but, you know, hopefully once it's all sorted out and settled, it should um, it should be all right. OK, I'll speak to you so soon. <laughs> There it is, it is done. I've still got the other Pendolino to do, the one you haven't seen for a very long time. Um, but uh, yeah, the first one is done and the second one will be started at some point. Um, now I'd love to say it's been plain sailing since the little problem with the transfer um, in the middle of the video, um, but it hasn't. It's been an absolute nightmare um, the transfers went on absolutely beautifully. There's no problems with the transfers whatsoever. Um, I did have to work out what transfer went on what coach and what orientation the windows were in. And that did take a while. That took about five to six days, I think, all in total. Um, purely because I had to keep reprinting the ones I hadn't got. And uh, But that wasn't a problem. And I, I did have... Uh, plenty of transfer papers so that's that was all right and that's but that wasn't the issue um, when I put it back on the track it just wouldn't move not at all no sausage not a sausage it's totally dead um, so I took the body off this is the power car just here I took the body off started wiggling the decoder and it started urching forward sort of uh, 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 wanting to go but going about an inch and then stopping again um, it took me most of last night to get that going and I managed to get it running absolutely smoothly and that was partly resetting the decoder, decoder and also resoldering some dry joints that I'd found. Uh, so that part worked brilliantly. Then I connected it to the train. Well, it had all been dismantled, hadn't it? You saw the train 
in its white version of the livery running earlier on in the video and it was running absolutely beautifully at that time uh, but as soon as I took it all apart I ha of course I had to remake some more of the couplings as well I ended up having to remake about four or five sets and of course they're all out of alignment um, some of the couplings weren't matching up pr correctly um, some of the uh, plates that go underneath the sh between the chassis and the, they were too thick I needed to file them down and it just took ages and I managed to get the train running fairly well and I mean at one point I had three carriages derail on each revolution and um, then I managed to get that solved and I managed to get it going round without any issues at all but fairly slowly that's those were some of the clips that you saw from the safer parts of the layout if you like um, but then I got it all done and then the coupling here gave up it just come apart and that led to a whole host of derailments on that first coach I could not work it out what was going on I ended up taking the couplings out um, refitting them Re repositioning the bogies, checking the back-to-backs on the bogies, on the wheels, and eventually I managed to get it going round. It's not perfect yet. Still needs a bit more work. That's why it's still and not why it's not running or why it's not running. So I hope you understand why you can't see it going at the moment, but I have put some, I did put a very short running session in at the end of the clips I did manage to get. But I will persevere and get it going. Um, I know what the issues are, and it's just a case of getting them set in exactly the right order, in the, exactly the right positions, and it will be fine. All right. Anyway, I am going to leave the video there. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed it, seeing how this transfer system works. And I do hope you enjoy your New Year celebrations coming up um, tomorrow or today, even today, tonight. But uh, anyway, just take care of yourself and I'll catch you again in 2022 here on Piccadilly. Bye for now.